Okay, uh, hi everybody. Welcome to our class, uh, the Advanced Transport Phenomena. Uh, my name is Young Tin Pan. Uh, you may just call me Frank. So, um, in our class or in our course, um, we are going to be discussing explicitly about energy and mass transport, or more commonly referred as heat and mass transport. We're going to assume that you already have some basic knowledge on the fluid mechanics part, so we're going to, you know, kind of omit that part in our discussion. Okay, um, so let's get started with our lecture for this semester. And our reference would be the transport phenomena by BSL. So basically you can find most of, or basically all of our course materials in these textbooks. I'm using the second edition at the moment. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so first today we are going to be looking at a thermal conductivity and diffusivity. So we know that thermal conductivity, or let's use red for that, thermal conductivity, let's write that down, and diffusivity. That's probably two words actually, so let's correct that. Conductivity. and diffusivity. And the reason we are discussing these two concepts together because actually um, for energy and mass transport or transfer, uh, they share a lot of things in common. So they can be discussed together. But let's start with the thermal conductivity first. And we're gonna start this by looking at some um, thought experiment, like a hypothetical situation, okay? So let's say that we have a infinite large slab that's a solid slab so let's draw that down we have a infinite large slab like that maybe we can draw like a 3d dimension outwards so we have a very very large slab and so let's write that down so we have a infinite large solid slab. So it's infinitely large on two dimension, but it has a fixed dimension on the z direction, or let's call it the y direction, okay? Okay, so the infinite large slab is infinite in the lateral dimension but it has a fixed dimension in the y direction, so let's give it a definition. Let's say that it has a thickness of L. So the slab has a thickness of L, and we can define the coordinates as, you know, the bottom is y equals to zero, and the top would be y equals to L. We say that the slab is, you know, originally at an equilibrium condition, what does that mean? That means that the top and bottom surface of the slab, or actually the temperature throughout the slab, is initially constant and set at T naught. So the temperature across the slab is T naught throughout. Okay, so this we call it the condition before the experiment. So this is before our experiment, before experiment, and typically we say that that's when T is negative, you know, at some negative time. Okay, now um, let's say that at T equals zero, suddenly we have a different situation. So let's say that at T equals zero, suddenly we have a change in the boundary conditions. So let's say that at T equals zero, suddenly we have a heating coil placed underneath our slab. So we have a heating coil like that. 
Okay, and still we have our coordinates written down, y equals zero, y equals L. But suddenly the temperature of the bottom plate is raised to T1. And our top upper end of the infinite slab is still maintained at T naught. Okay, so you can envision that our temperature profile now looks like this. So at this this you know instant instant, the temperature at the bottom would be T1, and the temperature at the rest of the slab still maintains at T0. Okay, this is at t equals zero. And we can imagine that the system is now going to change over time, right? Because we have a hotter surface at the bottom. So um, energy is going to transfer from where temperature is higher to where temperature is lower. So the temperature distribution, you can expect that that distribution will change over time and then we'll reach a new equilibrium. So what happens? when t is small so we can take a look at that so we can you know kind of think or anticipate that at some small t or you know just right after we change the temperature of the bottom of the slab so it's small t you can kind of imagine that you can kind of imagine that we still have a heating coil down here so the bottom is T1, the top is T0. This is still Y equals to L and Y equals to zero. You can imagine that, you know, the temperature's profile is gonna change over time. And when T is very small, where, where, you know, when we are closer to the bottom surface, the temperature is going to increase, something like that. Okay, so you have still, this is temperature, now it's becoming a function of both position y and time t. And then you can also anticipate the situation at equilibrium, okay? So we say at, when the system reaches equilibrium, or that's also saying when t approaches infinite, so you give it infinite long time to relax. Then you can anticipate that the system temperature profile will look like this. So you still have a heating coil at the bottom. You have T naught and T1 and the system still has a dimension of L. But you can anticipate that at steady state we now have a linear profile of our temperature distribution across our slab. So we have T1 at the bottom and T0 at the top. And when it's reaching equilibrium, the temperature is no longer a function of time. So T is only T of Y. Okay, and this straight line has a slope which describes the flux. Okay, so the flux is Q over A. So this is the heat flux. That's, you know, describing what, how many, describing the steady state heat flow across our slab. Okay, so let's take a look specifically at our uh, equilibrium condition, which is not a function of time anymore. So let's kind of copy that down and we're gonna paste it below and continue our discussion. So I kind of need to copy that. So let's continue our discussion under the equilibrium condition, right? So we know that at steady state, at steady state, there's going to be a constant heat flow. Across the slab.
the heat flux. The heat flux, which we generally use a symbol of a lowercase q, is defined as the amount of heat flowing across the cross-sectional area. Okay? And more importantly, the heat flux is proportional because you can see this linear profile here. It's actually proportional to the temperature difference over that distance L, or we call it a temperature gradient too, by a constant. Okay, so it's proportional. So we have an important number or important coefficient here. We typically use the symbol K. And the K here is called the thermal conductivity. Okay, now, this is uh, like a, what happens if we, you know, make the, this infinite slab infinitely thin, right? That means that what if we let the thickness L approach a zero? And then we will get then we get the differential form. Q in the y direction now equals to negative thermal conductivity times dt dy. Okay, and this is actually the one dimensional form of Fourier's law of heat conduction. Fourier's law of heat conduction. Okay. <clears throat> so what's important here about thermal conductivity, again, you can know that um, at steady state, the heat flux is proportional to the temperature gradient over that specific distance, and it is proportional by the thermal conductivity. So the thermal conductivity is a measure of how many heat is transferred uh, throughout some material or throughout some substances. Okay, and you can see that there is a negative sign here. So why is there a negative sign? Let's take a look at that. We have a negative sign. The negative sign is because the direction of heat flux is actually opposite to the temperature gradient, right? Because we know that heat flows from high temperature region to low temperature regions. So it's because that the direction of heat flow of heat flux is opposite of temperature gradient. Meaning that we know that heat flows from high temperature to low temperature regions. To low T regions. Okay, 
So again, let's revisit thermal conductivity. Thermal conductivity is a measure of 